can you make the survey look a lot more modern? I like everything else, but it just looks a bit boring. I have modernized the survey with a sleek glass morphism design, gradient accents, and improved hover effects. I also added a more engaging background pattern and improved the radio button styling for a more contemporary feel. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through a brand new feature in Sim Theory we call Create With Code, and also its sister skill, Visualize Data. Let's start with Create With Code. There's two ways to access Create With Code. The first is just to click Create With Code from the menu here. The second is to go into the Skills menu and you can select Create With Code. And then you have a number of purpose-built skills for creating different kinds of things like making a game, creating a survey, creating a form, a quiz, and so on and so forth. So the first one that we're gonna look at is building an educational app to educate maybe us or our students or a friend on a new concept. And in this case, I'm gonna get it to educate us on reinforcement learning. So the first thing we're gonna do is click create with code and then I'm gonna paste my prompt in here, which says, can you help build an educational experience for absolute beginners that helps them learn about reinforcement learning and has a demonstration? So create with code is going to literally write the code to produce this educational app. So let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so you can see it's created this learning reinforcement application here. It's got what is reinforcement learning. It describes a little bit about reinforcement learning, some key concepts, and it's built a visualization showing the reward per episode changing over time. It's pretty amazing actually off a single shot here. So this is a great demonstration and uh, it also has some stats below so we can see its success rate here and episodes completed and learn all there is to know about reinforcement learning. So let's look now at how we can interact in Create with Code mode to make changes to this application. So the first thing I might wanna do is just add a bit more color to the application. So I'll say, can you add some more color to the app? So you can just basically ask it to make any changes that you want, just like you'd be speaking maybe to a software developer and create with code will go off and time warp, create a new version and iteration and make the changes that you request. Okay, so you can see now it's made the update. I'll scroll across. It's put a nice border around it. Uh, and it looks, I think it looks a bit better. Okay, so maybe now we wanna add a background image just to make it look even nicer. So we'll say, can you add a suitable background image. Okay, so now it's gonna go off and time warp again. And what it's doing is actually calling another skill to create an image and then it'll insert that into the background of our application. Okay, so we can see now the background image has been added in. Now, if we wanna get a better look at this, we can say view and then enter the full screen mode just to get a full visualization of the app but I don't necessarily love the padding around this. I think it doesn't look that great. So let's ask it to make that modification next. Can you add more padding around the app so the background shows more? Okay, so you can see it's been able to add the padding in. So I think that looks a lot nicer. Now let's view it one more time full screen and make sure we're happy with it. I think it looks really, really cool here. Now, what would be even more amazing is if we had a chat section down here somewhere at the bottom where you could ask follow-up questions about reinforcement learning. So let's ask it to add an AI chat bot at the bottom here and, uh, and that'll allow us to ask questions. So we'll say, can you add an AI chat at the bottom below the learning statistics so they can ask follow-up questions about RL. Okay, so let's scroll down and you can see that it's added a section here about asking about reinforcement learning and a chatbot. Now, unfortunately, there's some errors here in the console, but the cool thing is I can just ask it to fix these. So I'll say fix these errors, it stopped working. Okay, so it looks like it's been able to fix the errors, which is great. So just to test it out here, we can see our interactive demo is still working. 
And below that, we have our chat system here. So we'll say, hey, just to make sure it's working here. And it's saying, hello, how can I assist you with your reinforcement learning today? And we'll say, uh, how does RL work? And so you can see, I actually have a full LLM system here that is trained in reinforcement learning that students could potentially ask questions with. Up here, I'm running my interactive demo. I've got my learning statistics here. I've got an explanation of what is reinforcement learning. So I'm pretty happy with the application that I've been able to build just by going back and forth with the AI in create with code mode here. Okay, so in this next example, I'm gonna show you how to create a survey. And I also wanna show you how create with code is able to store the data from the survey and help you download that data or even visualize it with a custom visualization. So let's click the plus icon here. We're gonna select create with code and then create a survey. I've got a prompt that I prepared earlier. It says make a survey which asks the user which is their favorite large language model. It has some options. And then it says after they submit their preference, it should show confetti and have a thank you screen. Okay, so we have our LLM survey here. We've got this cool dot uh, sort of LLM networking effect in the background, which is really nice. And we've got our options here that we can vote on. So let's vote for one of them and just make sure it works. We get a cool sound effect. We get this confetti and we also get a response recorded and a cool robot at the end, which is nice. So let's just say I want to make a modification to this and I do, I want to make it look more modern. I think this looks pretty bland. So in this example, I'm going to use my voice to do that. So I'm going to click voice mode here and I've got push to talk mode enabled and I'm just going to ask it to make some changes. Can you make the survey look a lot more modern? I like everything else, but it just looks a bit boring. I have modernized the survey with a sleek glass morphism design, gradient accents, and improved hover effects. I also added a more engaging background pattern and improved the radio button styling for a more contemporary feel. Wow, okay, I'm really happy with this. This looks, this looks great. When I hover on it, you'll see this nice glass effect. Can I select it? Yep, I still can, and I can still submit my responses as well. So that's really nice. I couldn't be more happy with this design. So now you're probably thinking once people submit their votes, how do you actually get the data? How do you view the data? So up here, you click view, you select app data settings, and you'll see that it's automatically turned on because this application needs to store data. So it's flicked it on, but you can easily disable it if you don't want to collect data for the app. Now below that, you've got data export options. You can just download the submissions as a CSV and do whatever you want with them. You can comma separate email addresses. So you'll get notified every time someone submits uh, the survey. And then you've also got create visualization. So that's what I want to show you now. So to visualize the data, you can click create visualization and it will create a custom visualization for you. Okay, so you can see it's created a custom dashboard here with the responses. So I can see the breakdown here and I obviously only did two votes. So you can see Anthropic and DeepSeek. And below that, you've got some key insights. It says the survey shows an even split between DeepSeek R1 and Anthropic Sonnet 3.5. So you can imagine with more people voting, how the these custom dashboards can be really informative, but you can also download the data as a CSV and do whatever you need to do with it. All right, so in this next example, I'm gonna show you how you can create a landing page using Create With Code. And to do that, we're gonna click the plus icon here and select the preset under Create With Code, create a landing page. And I've got a prompt that I prepared earlier. The landing page I wanna create is one of those social media link in the bio pages to have links to my X account, my Facebook, and the This Day in AI podcast. So I've asked to create a really slick theme and add a profile image, and it should say my name in it. So here we go. Okay, so not a bad result, but obviously that's not me in the photo. So this is a great opportunity to show you how in Create with Code mode, you can use your own assets simply by dragging them in. So in this case, I wanna drag in my profile image, which I'll do now. But if you're creating a game or anything else in Create With Code, you can also add in videos, image files, 
PDFs, CSVs, all the kinds of files you would expect to use them in your application or whatever it is that you're creating. So I've got my profile image uploaded here and I'm gonna say, can you add my profile image? Okay, so my profile image has been added, but I wanna make this thing look way better. So I'm gonna ask it now to theme it out based on the background image in my profile photo. So this is looking even better. You can see that it's slightly moving and it has this cool effect. And I can even shrink it down to see what it would look like on a mobile device here as well. So the final thing I wanna do is add in a form so people can contact me from this page and leave a message and get notified when people fill in that form. So I'm gonna do it with my voice using push to talk. Can you add another button below the other buttons that look similar to them that says contact Mike at the bottom? And I want this to open up a modal that has a form on it and it should ask for the name and email of the person filling in the form. Also have a text area where they can enter the message uh, make sure you save the result and have a really nice success screen that is on theme as well. All right, great. So it's added that. Now let's test it out. So I'll click contact Mike. I've got a form here. I'll put in my name, my email and a message. Click send. It says message sent, which is great. So we have a success page and I'm pretty happy with this. It looks pretty good. So the final thing I'll show you here is under view mode, under app data settings. So similar to before, we could visualize the form data if we really wanted, we can download it as a CSV. But if I wanted to be notified every time someone filled in the form, I can put in my email in here and save the setting. And every time someone fills in this form, I'll be notified now. And you might be wondering, how do you share this? How do you use this on your social media page? So to do that, you click file, you select share, and then you just simply click share and copy link and you'll get a unique link to your creation, which you can share with anyone or put it publicly on the web. You could put it in your social media profile in this case. So just as we've seen in the other examples, it's all about just treating Create With Code like you're working with a developer. You can just talk to it, ask it for different instructions and it will create new versions. And down here, you can switch back to the version. So if for some reason it makes a mistake or you run into a problem, you can just go back to the version and continue on from that version before. And you'll see all of our different iterations here as we scroll back, even going back to the first iteration where it wasn't even really a photo of me in the first place. And then all the way through to the end here, where we got the creation to exactly where we wanted it. All right, so finally, let's look at the sister skill of Create With Code called Visualize Data. So you can access Visualize Data here just on the main menu of a new session or in the menu itself under Visualize Data. Like many, I was shocked by the recent fires in LA and I actually looked up from Cal Fire some data to see the top 20 deadliest California wildfires to get some perspective on where these fires fit in in history and cal fire have this pdf on their website but it's pretty hard to visualize the data because it's just a list with a bunch of details so i thought in this visualize data example we could take this pdf drag it in and ask it to create a map like google maps and show each of the 20 deadliest fires based on the amount of acres that burned and then represent them using fire emojis and allow us to click on them to see more information. So let's see what it comes up with. All right, so we have a map of the different fires here. We can zoom in, which is great, and click on them and see details about the acres burn, uh, the area they're in, deaths, and all the different information that was contained in that PDF. So let's say I wanted to make it a little bit nicer because I wanted to present this data maybe in a news article or on my website just to give some context. So we might want to add the logo of Cal Fire because that's where the data is from. So I'm going to ask it to add the logo to the top right hand corner of the map. All right, so the Cal Fire logo has been added. Now I'm going to do a few more things just to make this look a little bit better and get it ready as a final product. Hopefully you can see 
after my montage that it took a few goes to get everything exactly how I wanted it, but I'm really happy with the finished product. So I've got this map here, I've got a really nice title, I've got some imagery in the background just to theme out the design here of the data. And now I can zoom in just using my pinch to zoom feature here on, on my Mac, click on each fire, understand more information about it. And you can also see now I have a representation of the radius or the area uh, for the amount of acres burnt. So what I've been able to do is turn this PDF produced by CalFire that is quite hard to understand and position, especially if you're not familiar with the different areas, into this beautiful interactive map. All right, so that's the end of this walkthrough of Create With Code and the Visualize Data skills. These new skills unlock so many possibilities in everything from education to marketing to data analysis and just fun. It's important though to remember most of the time it'll take you a couple of iterations just like in the real world to get a product you're happy with. But my advice is to just work with your assistant like they're a coworker and give them instructions of what you'd like changed or what you've li you'd like fixed or what you think is just wrong. We'll be releasing more shorter style videos with examples of things you can create using each mode in the not too distant future. So make sure you get subscribed to the channel to get notified when those videos drop. But now I'm off to practice my German with this AI powered German quiz creation. Wish me luck. Correct. Apple is the German word for Apple. How do you say thank you in German? Correct. Danke is the German word for thank you. What is the German word for dog? Correct. Hund is the German word for dog. Which of the following is the German word for book? Correct. Buch is the German word for book. What is the German word for house? Correct. House is the German word for house. How do you say good morning in German? 